Whether you're restoring an old vehicle or you're just doing a repaint, you can't always trust the paint that you see on the outside of the body panels, especially a vehicle that has had an obvious paint job that's old. This door is a perfect example. In the beginning, it looked like it had half decent body work on it and not too much damage. When I started stripping the paint down to bare metal, this is what I found. Some previous old repair where someone just caved and paved right over the old rust and rot. The correct way to repair this is to cut out the old damaged area and weld in new fresh metal. The goal in the end is to leave you with a finish that's going to require little to no body filler. So let's dive right in. Here you can really see what we're working with. I like to start by using some painter's tape as a guide for the area I'm cutting out. The idea is to get outside of any damaged or pitted metal so we are welding our repair into a clean metal. I use the angle grinder to cut out the perimeter of the metal, then use a flap disc on the angle grinder to sand away the top layer of the metal on the edges of the door. With the old metal removed, we can make a template for our new metal using some chipboard or construction paper. Remember to add the extra for the edges that are folded over the edges of the door that we ground off. In fact, it doesn't hurt to leave more than we need to assure we don't have too little to cover the edges of the door. Here's a tip when you want to recreate the defined broken edge on the bottom of the door when doing a repair like this. Use the VersaBend brake and it's as simple as this. You take your flat piece of metal, you stick it in the metal brake like this, you tighten your knobs down, and you pull up on the lever like so. What you're going to be left with is a nice, clean, broken edge that's going to look exactly like the original when you're done the repair. The best part about this tool is you're going to find countless uses as your metal fabrication skills progress. Now back to the action. When using a TIG welder, we want a very tight fitting gap to keep the heat and the weld seam size down. Use aviation snips, a file, and a small sanding disc to get the panel to fit as tight as possible. With our patch panel fitting pretty good, we can now tack weld it in place. When TIG welding sheet metal, it's very important that you use filler rod that matches the metal you're working with. Thin filler rod can be very difficult to find in anything but large quantities, and when you do find it, oftentimes it's very expensive. Here's a simple solution. Run some excess MIG wire off your spool and straighten it out. What you're left with is the thin filler rod that you were looking for all along. When butt welding sheet metal, the heat affected zone shrinks as it cools and it pulls the metal in. This is what causes a glow spot or oil canning around the weld joint. By hammering on dolly on the weld seam, you are stretching the weld seam back out and relaxing the metal to where it needs to be. With the main weld seam completely welded, we can now drill holes in the bottom of the patch panel and replicate the original spot welds that held the bottom of the panel to the inner door structure. Finally, we can grind away any excess metal on the bottom of the door and knock down any proud welds on the main weld seam. We can then blend the repaired area into the original metal. This method of rust repair can be slower than using a MIG welder, but it's much more controlled and requires very little grinding in the end. I did use a couple small dabs of silicon bronze filler rod to fill some imperfections from cutting and readjusting the panel, but otherwise, all I used was the mini torch with the TIG 200DC and the 030 filler wire to complete this repair. For more videos on welding and fabrication, be sure to subscribe to the Eastwood channel and visit eastwood.com to get everything you need to do the job right.